Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about ES Build. Have you heard of it? No? That's fine. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to tell you about all the new fun little toys that I look at and thank golly gee, I wish I had a reason to use those every day, but I don't because there's only 24 hours in a day and there's more than 24 tools that are made in a given day. So, you know, c'est la vie, c'est la vore, c'est no more. Uh, let's just talk about ES Build. So, very quickly, what is ES Build? It is, according to its website, an extremely fast JavaScript bundler. This is a cool animation. Kind of shows the comparison in speed to compile 10 copies of the 3.js library. You know what 3.js is? It is a uh, JavaScript 3D library that is large, very large. And their benchmark for ES Build is how long it takes to do a production build 10 times. ES build is less than half a second, which is ridiculous. Uh, Webpack 5, which is what I'm, 4 and 5, which is my usual go-to bundler. Again, a bundler is a way to take a lot of JavaScript files and put it together so you can actually put it onto a website and make it performance happy and nice. Uh, Webpack 4 and 5 takes over half a minute. Uh, Webpack 5 takes almost a minute. And that's a big deal. Uh, doesn't matter as much for production, you don't do that as often, but if you kind of think about production builds typically take longer than development builds. So if you think that a production build takes 37 seconds, um, the development build or in, an incremental build is probably under a second, which is like really fast. I don't know what that is. I think that's me touching a hot flame. I don't know, my sound effects are changing, whatever. Um, so. ES build was built, I think, to be fast, <laughs> which is fine because if you've been in the front end space for a while, you know one of the biggest pain points are is the bundling build tools. They are predominantly written in JavaScript because it's good to eat your, your own dog food as a JavaScript engineer. But the problem, of course, is that JavaScript is not the fastest language to do this in. And that's why ES build is written in Go. How could you write a JavaScript bundler in a language that's not JavaScript? The, the, the gall, the sacrilegiousness of it. How horrible. And then you look at this and you're like, damn, that's a good idea. But that's why it's faster. Uh, it's bitten, bitten? It's written in Go. Where's the repo? Give me the repo. Give me the repo. Here we go. Lib, it's a package. API, CLI, I don't know, there's Go everywhere. Oh, that's the thing I wanted to find. Where is it? Where is it? Languages, Go. 77% of the repos in Go. Like the entire thing is written in Go and Go is built for these things pretty well. It's a systems-based it's a systems -based language um, built for being, serving these things. Uh, what's interesting about it, where is it? It says, uh, blah, 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 blah. it uses, I forgot where I read it. It uses parallelism very well. Uh, Go has Go routines that makes it very easy to spawn off tasks. So like Go can be bundling multiple files at once, whereas JavaScript's just single threaded, as we all know, love, and sometimes enjoy. Um, and people are really obsessing over ES Build because it is so dying fast. Um, Vite is a new bundler itself. Uh, it's kind of like a, uh, what is it? How do you? Yes, where is it? Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? It's a front end tooling, so it's kind of like all things built into one. But Vite is kind of like Parcel. I think it's the easiest comparison. It's a way to get up and going very quickly with a tool that lets you write a front end application and kind of has smart defaults in it. Uh, fun fact: it's written by the author of Vue.js. Uh, Vite one was actually built explicitly for Vue.js. It would only work for Vue.js. It was built to kind of handle uh, Vue.js's single component files. If you see my Vue videos, you kind of get an idea for that, but you kind of have styles, templates, and uh, behavior all in one file with this custom.view file. And then with uh, Vite 2.0, uh, Evan Yu was just like, F it, let's just make this good for all front-end applications. So honestly, you can make a, so this is a great example, create React app versus Vite React to see how long it takes. Um, Create React app on the left, Vite on the right, and this is really low fidelity, but it's loading up the page, and Vite is done 
even before Create React App has even installed anything. Really, really fast. And this is in large part due to ES Build. Like if you look in here, um, uh, ES Build powered depth pre bundling. Uh, it now uses ES Build, which results in 10 to 100 times faster dependency pre bundling, which is um, ridiculous. Like that's really, really fast. Uh, and then the question that comes to me is like, do I think this is a good idea? Like, do I think writing a bundler not in JavaScript and Go or uh, there's also this other thing called SWC, which is actually a compiler, not a bundler. This is more akin to Babel, but this is written in Rust, which is also a very low level systems language, um, but is also, it's 20x faster than Babel on a single thread and 70x faster on a four core benchmark, which is tss, hot, tss, hot, tss, hot. That's so weird. It's so weird. But the question is, is it a good idea to write all these bundlers for JavaScript, not in JavaScript? And the answer is, yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, this is in some ways the next evolution of front, the front end tooling space. Uh, we've kind of proven out the usefulness and the need for these types of tools, a compiler and a bundler. And we've kind of lit, hit the limits of speed for JavaScript. Just have, uh, again, JavaScript itself is not going anywhere. The web's gonna be around for a long time, but the tooling doesn't have to be in JavaScript because that's just installed on your system, on your machine. So I think this is kind of an interesting next evolution in the front-end tooling space where tools are being written to assist JavaScript, but not written in JavaScript. And like my old reason to not do this was always like, well, then you can't read the source code and know how to debug it. But when's the last time you jumped into the Webpack source code to figure out how things worked? Like who who's doing that except for maintainers or contributors? Nobody's doing that. So uh, there's no reason to make that accessible if nobody's actually accessing it. <laughs> uh, I'm very interested in this. I think it's very interesting. These new experiments, it's not really an experiment. Um, the biggest trade off here with ES build is that it doesn't actually compile down, I think to common JS. Uh, someone in the comments is gonna correct me. I think you have to kind of do a post transform to do that for production if you want to but it's trying to take advantage of modern tooling. And if you don't have to support, what is uh, caniuse.com? What is ES module support? Uh, modules. Uh, not IE, no surprise there, but actually most evergreen browsers can do that. iOS Safari even supports module tags. So if you're not supporting legacy browsers, you could probably start using ES built in production today. I think that says that it's not exactly production ready. Um, I don't know what that is. But uh, it's curious to see that this is gonna make the developer experience all that much better. I mean, if you try out Vite locally, and I have, uh, it is just stupid how fast it is. Um, especially for new projects that you're spinning up, a side project you just wanna play around with, I would maybe recommend Vite more than anything else. If you're looking for like a full stack, React framework, then Next.js is your best bet. If they're just looking for a simple single page app, client side only thing, Vite is gonna give you a really good time. Uh, it has all these lovely defaults that Partial has with none of the spe painful speeds of it. It's just fast. Uh, hot modular loading built in, um, very interesting. And the last question is like, is this a good investment of you doing this? So does it have staying power? And I think so. Like people want things to be fast and ES Build and SWC will provide that. Uh, Webpack's always gonna be around. Uh, uh, ES Build is, is a little bit, uh, where's the word? It's being opinionated like other opinionated tools where it's not gonna include features such as support for other front-end languages like Elm, Svelte, TypeScript type checking, just use TypeScript itself, um, and an API for custom AST manipulation. It's trying to do what it wants. It has a goal in mind. It wants to attain it and then just be good and stable and solid. Uh, if you have a lot of customization requirements, Webpack will always be around to help you with that, but that's not the point of ES Build. It's just to make things really fast. Uh, I would be curious to see if there's a way to build on top of ES Build like Vite did, where you can actually provide the customization of Webpack to a large degree 
um, by building abstractions on top of ES Build itself, which I can imagine very much going on. It's very interesting things happening in this space. It's kind of like the next generation of front-end tooling, not in JavaScript, uh, which is cool. Um, and I'm excited to see where it goes. So I'm curious, have you played around with Vite, ES Build, uh, SWC? Does it make you interested in learning Go or Rust? For me, yes, but I'm always interested in learning new languages, but who has the time? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the video. Really interesting, very curious, excited to see how things develop. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you again in another video next week. Stay happy, stay coding.